Good morning everyone. Today we will be discussing the management of carcinoma unknown primary with neck nodes. So what is uh, carcinoma unknown primary? Uh, according to WHO, it is the histological diagnosis of metastasis without diagnosis of a primary and entity which, is, which accounts for 3% of all neoplasms. So in uh, 1957, Combs et al. they laid down the criteria that patients should have should not have any history of previous malignancy, there should be no definite uh, symptoms related to primary tumor, there should be no clinical laboratory evidence of a primary tumor and one or more cervical masses should be proved histologically to be carcinoma. Its incidence is around 2 to 9 percent in all the head and neck cancers and it accounts for less than 10 percent of all unknown primary carcinomas. Annual incidence is about 0.34 cases per 100,000 cases and the most common histology is squamous cell carcinoma which accounts for 65 to 76 percent of all cases. Others are adenocarcinoma, undifferentiated and nasopharyngeal types, lymphomas, melanomas. So if uh, left untreated, they, uh, the primary cancer, it is evident in 13 to 55 percent of patients after neck surgery alone and uh, that is in due course of time uh, the primary will emerge an isolated su uh, supraclavicular lymph node including squamous cell carcinoma almost always arises from the cancer of the skin infraclavicular primary or they have a different natural history and prognosis and patients with cervical squamous cell unknown primary they relatively have a good uh, prognosis if we see the staging uh, the nodal and the metastasis staging is uh, same but we need to see that it is not TX it is uh, after because we have evaluated the patient properly we stage it as T0 that is there is no evidence of primary. Now uh, Gregoire uh, et al they gave the incidence of lymph node involvement according to the tumor site. So uh, we can predict this what could be the probable site according to the level of lymph node involved that is uh, if it is level 2 the node is at level 2 the uh, chances of primary being at oral cavity is around 79 uh, oropharynx is 81 hypopharynx 80 percent larynx 71 and nasopharynx 71 percent and likewise for other uh, levels also uh, he defined the incidence of primary also as the uh, nodal size increases the chances of it being positive for cancer it also increases. Now how do we diagnose a case of unknown primary? What are the diagnostic workup? So we need to have a proper history for, of the patient. We need to evaluate the patient clinically, uh, imaging, molecular assays, pen endoscopy with biopsies and there are certain new modalities which we will be discussing. So history we need to know what are the symptoms which can indicate towards the primary like epistaxis, uh, nasal obstruction they indicate toward nasopharyngeal primary, otalgia, dysphagia, dysarthria, oro or hypopharyngeal primary, voice or respiratory changes for laryngeal primary, skin lesion for skin cancers and cough and breathlessness for lung and other history of uh, any substance abuse, sexual history, ethnicity, run, race, sun exposure etc. we need to take into account. Apart from that, uh, we need to examine the neck properly, what is the location of the node and its relation to surrounding structure. Unilateral is most common, however, it can be bilateral in around 10% of cases. If there are multiple bilateral lymph nodes, we need to rule out infection, lymphoma or nasopharyngeal cancer because uh, they are usually higher in the differentials for bilateral cervical lymph nodes and isolated masses in the submental. Uh, they can be inflammatory or they can be associated with benign salivary gland conditions. 63 percent of the patients who have supraclavicular lymph nodes, they usually have infraclavicular primary. So we need to search for infraclavicular primaries in patients with supraclavicular lymph nodes, while only 5 percent patients with uh, upper cervical nodes have infraclavicular primary and 83 percent of the primary is in lungs and 3 to 8 percent with carcinoma unknown primary squamous cell carcinoma may have lung primary and uh, we need to examine the primary site properly like oral, oral cavity and pharyngeal examination, scalp examination, uh, FOL should be done, digital palpation of the 
tongue is mandatory and examine uh, we should uh, examine the patient to look for bleeding after initial palpation of the tonsil or base of tongue and abdominal examination that we should not only focus on oral cavity we should uh, oral cavity and other head and neck site we should look for primary uh, that the node may be from other sites as well and uh, then to determine the histology the investigations include FNAB core needle biopsy or FNAB under image guidance in cases uh, those are inconclusive excisional biopsy or an open biopsy are also recommended if the uh, histology of the primary is epithelial it can be squamous cell adenocele undifferentiated poorly differentiated or small cell non epithelial include lymphoma and melanoma and poorly differentiated for those we need IHC sometimes most cases are identified as lymphoma rest are carcinoma and poorly differentiated neuroendocrine tumors the IHC markers which uh, various IHC markers are available which uh, help in the diagnosis of the primary whether it is carcinoma melanoma lymphoma or non small cell non seminotomatous germ cell tumor or GCTs and these are the various tissue and antigens which uh, indicate toward possible primary like thyroglobulin if it is positive then it can be thyroid CK EMA is for squamous cell S100 and HMB45 for melanoma and likewise as listed additional workup for supraclavicular lymph node uh, CECT neck and thorax neck uh, chest and abdomen pelvis should be done symptom directed endoscopy should be done and tumor markers should be done like CEA, CA125, CA15.3 etc. For male more than 40 years PSA should be done for female sonomamo followed by biopsy plus IHC if, if there is any doubtful lesion and PET CT uh, should be done. Now what are the imaging which should be done? It into CT scan, MRI, PET or PET CT and imaging should be done before any invasive diagnostic procedures to avoid any false positive results so CT is the mainstay of imaging workup and it includes CT from skull base to clavicles and it is good and inexpensive MRI is to complement or supplement CT and it is particularly helpful in cases of nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal primaries to rule out the primaries in those locations and uh, PET CT now uh, uh, the significant it has significant consequences on individual treatment decisions and the individual modification of treatment decision as well and uh, it may change in the therapeutic approach so various studies have shown that PET CT 18 FDG PET CT it has high sensitivity and low specificity for the detection of primary tumors in patients with cervical node metastasis of unknown origin and uh, there was a study by Miller et al on regarding the management of unknown primary carcinoma uh, and they gave the long term follow up on a negative PET CT and negative pen endoscopy so they uh, concluded the PET CT detected occult primary in around 30 percent of the cases and if we combine PET and pen endoscopy they detected primary in around 45 percent of the cases and uh, if we see the comparative diagnostic uh, yield there are no prospective trials but if we see the respective retrospective data the CT has a diagnostic yield of around 9.6 percent MR is 0 PET is 14.6 PET CT is 40, 44 percent and if we combine PET CT plus PEN endoscopy with directed biopsy then the uh, if we can find the uh, primary in around 60 percent of the cases now uh, regarding tonsillectomy since uh, tonsil can be a primary site in around 18 to 40 percent of the cases earlier it was recommended to do tonsillectomy to find primary and it is also estimated that synchronous tumor can be between 5 to 10 percent in the upper aerodigestic tract so the evidence for tonsillectomy it comes from various studies like if only ipsilateral tonsillectomy was done the, the rate of finding the primary was around 18 to 32 percent and if it bilateral was done it was around 23 to 40 percent but however uh, we need to see whether there is any role of tonsillectomy in today's era of PET CT 
this study which was done earlier it showed that it should they recommended it should be done in uh, even if pet ct is done for patient however the data is not robust and most studies which re recommend tonsillectomy they are from the west where the incidence of hpv is high however in asian countries and indian settings the rate of hpv positive cases is low and so tonsillectomy is not recommended regarding pen endoscopy uh, the definitive evaluation of pen endoscopy is required and it includes direct laryngoscopy nasopharyngoscopy esophagoscopy bronchoscopy and guided biopsy and uh, if we see treatment the treatment options includes uh, surgery rt surgery followed by rt and um, this is the nccn guidelines which says for n1 with without uh, spread rt or observation after surgery and n2 n3 we recommend rt or ctrt and for uh, if there is extra uh, capsular spread uh, ctrt is recommended thank you